I used to go to Google Search Console every single week to download the data and plug it into a spreadsheet, but no more. I've automated it and so can you. So we're going to be using Google Sheets in order to store all of our data and we're going to be using Google Apps Scripts in order to pull the data from the Google Search Console API. We're going to grab the number of queries that our website is showing up for as well as the number of times that it shows up on the first page of results because that's really important for SEO. We're also going to grab the number of impressions as well as the total number of clicks. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the Google Search Console API has a two-day delay, which means that we have to wait until Wednesday in order to grab all the stats from the previous week. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull stats for the entire week from Sunday to Saturday, which means there's a little bit of logic involved and we'll have to pull in the professor for help. Professor! Uh, let's let the professor grab a cup of coffee. So in the meantime, let's set up the foundations. So we'll create a new spreadsheet using sheets.new. And then from there, we'll click on the extensions option in the menu bar and select app scripts to open up our script editor. The first function we'll write is to access the Search Console API. And we're going to reuse this function a couple of times. So we'll pass through some parameters so that we can make this function more reusable. We'll use site property, start date, end date, and then also an, an optional parameter for dimensions. In our code, we'll replace all the areas that are going to use these params. And for dimensions, we're going to do something special here. We're going to do an if statement so that if the dimensions is passed through in the params, we'll do payload.dimensions equals dimensions. And then from there, it's pretty straightforward. We have our request URL that we're going to pass through when we call URL fetch app dot fetch. Once we get the response, we're going to parse that out using json.parse. And when we're done, we should be able to see the output that looks something like this. And now for our date. To get today's date, we're going to do new date. However, to get the date from last week, we can't just do new date minus seven because the dates are actually in milliseconds. So we need to convert seven days into X milliseconds. Professor. Ah, yes, yes. That's a good question. So. To convert to milliseconds, first we need to get two days date and do get time on it to get the timestamp, which is in milliseconds. Now we have to figure out how many milliseconds to subtract from our new timestamp. And since there are 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, and 1000 milliseconds in a second, we take 24 times 60 times 60 times 1000. And then we multiply that by the number of days that we want to subtract by, which is seven in this case. And that gives us the date seven days ago that we need to use to make our calculation. So that's going to give us a date from seven days ago, but it's not going to give us the starting date and the ending date for a particular week. To do that, we're going to create a new function called get week date period with a parameter for date. But professor, how do we calculate the first and last days of the week? Mm, yes, that is a tricky one. So to do it, we will need to get the position of the day in the week. What I mean by that? Sunday is position zero in the week and then Saturday is position six. So any day that you are within the week, you want to take that position and then subtract it from itself to get back to the beginning of the week, which is Sunday. So you can do this by doing dot get day on today's date and then subtract that from today's date. So once you have the beginning of the week, you can get the end of the week by taking the date and adding six to it in order to get to Saturday. Thanks, Professor. So we'll wrap that logic in a date.setDate function to create a new date. And the Search Console API needs it in a particular format. So we're going to use utilities.formatDate in order to reformat it to be year, month, and date. And then we'll create an object to return both values back when the function is called. Now that we have our dates, it's time to call the API. The first one we're going to do is just for the clicks and impressions data. So we'll call the function and pass through just the site property, the week start, and the week end. Next, we'll get our query data by calling the function again, but using a for parameter for query. To get the count of queries that made it to the first page, we're going to have another function called calculate weekly metrics. And in here, we're going to loop through the data and every single time that the query has a position less than 10, we'll increment the first page and queries are just going to increment no matter what. So the last thing to do is organize our data and import it into the spreadsheet. We'll start by creating an array, and then in the array, we'll push through all the data that we want, which is going to be the date that this was being recorded, then the first page of results, then the total number of queries, and also the total number of impressions, 
the number of clicks, the week start, and also the week end so we know what period this data represents. Then we'll call spreadsheet app that open by ID in order to open up our spreadsheet. And we'll get the sheet that we want to log this into. And we'll finally set the values to this range. And to test it, we'll run this in a script editor, go back to our spreadsheet, and we can see that there's a new row with the data for last week. Now, in order for us to truly never have to worry about this again, we're going to create a new trigger, which will run this every single week on Wednesday after the two day delay is over and pull that data into the spreadsheet so that we don't have to do that manually ever again. To continue supercharging your workflows, make sure to check out this video right over here.